Thanks, Derek, and thanks, uh, thanks for attending. So, uh, Warbridge's Fennel on Gold has been a pretty exciting discovery story in the last year, and uh, today I'll try to give you a sense for uh, how our gold deposit is, gold system is shaping up and what the plans are for, for, for this year. Um, this photo already shows you a couple of the key features uh, I think Fenlon has is, uh, that we really like about it is, uh, one, it's in a, in, a, in a totally underexplored belt. We're in this swamp land where, where uh, you know, historically there was not much chance for prospecting, so we think there's a lot of, a lot of good blind discoveries to be made here. And the other thing is uh, we've, we've got a lot of infrastructure and development already in place, which, uh, which was paid for by, uh, by a bulk sample, successful bulk sample we took last year. So we're really well set up uh, uh, for, for large programs here and, and also uh, developing the project pretty quickly. Uh, usual forward-looking statements. So a few highlights of the project. Uh, so we're located in, in, in Quebec, which obviously is one of the best jurisdictions to, to do business in and, and develop projects. Uh, we've got a robust exploration program on the way. We did 75,000 meters of drilling uh, last year. Uh, we have a 100 to 120,000 meter program on the way this year, which is fully funded. Um, up to basically a year ago, uh, most of the story was about uh, this high-grade main Garo zone, where we've seen these triple-digit uh, gold grades over, over several meters, spectacular uh, uh, mineralization. And that's where we completed the, uh, the bulk sample of, of close to 35,000 tons at 18 and a half gram per ton. But, um, you know, really last year's uh, exploration uh, was what, what, what uh, was very successful, uh, discovering uh, 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 the larger gold system, which uh, uh, the Area 51 in, in Tabasco, which is mainly what I'm going to be talking about today. But that's basically where you can see some of these uh, uh, long intersections of, you know, one and a half grams over, over more than 200 meters. And, and in the Tabasco, we've got these uh, uh, spectacular intersections of, of like 22 grams over 48 meters, 43 grams over 19 meters. Um, so basically, these exploration results last year, you know, attracted a, a lot of attention. Uh, uh, some, some supportive shareholders, Eric Sprott is, uh, is close to th uh, 23%. Uh, shareholder, and we just welcomed Curtin Lake Gold in December as a strategic partner for the project, uh, who came in for, for close to 10%. Uh, and we still have William Day Construction, for example, which is a Northern Ontario uh, trucking uh, construction company, which were actually the, the company that gave us the initial loan to, to buy Fenelon three years ago. Um, so you can see the share price has, has uh, really in the last year and a half uh, increased tenfold on, on the back of these uh, results. And um, we closed the year with, with about 57 million uh, cash. Uh, and um, our program this year is, 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 is about 36 million. So that gives us the flexibility to either accelerate the program if, if, if things are looking good, or, or we have actually quite a bit of funding for, for next, year, next year's program, program as well. Uh, so the board management uh, changed a lot in the co last couple of years. We strengthened it a lot, diversified it, as as we've become uh, more of a you know gold explorer in Quebec. Uh, we added, for example, uh, Brian Penny was here as well, uh, our CFO. He used to be the CFO of Kinross, uh, Western Goldfields, New Gold, uh, and uh, most recently uh, Tony Mukuch, a KL Gold CEO, joined us, of course, as part of that uh, uh, placement that they made. So Quebec, uh, Fenelon Gold is, is located in nor northern Quebec, in, in northern Abitibi. Um, so we're, we're about uh, 75, 80 kilometers uh, along strike from Detour Lake. Um, this is basically very similar geology like, like you would see in the southern Abitibi. But like I said, this whole area is totally underexplored because we're, we're, we're all working undercover. There's about at least 20, 30 meters of, of overburden. Uh, in this area. So exploration really only started in the, in the 80s, uh, 90s, uh, with airborne geophysics and then, of course, uh, drilling. But uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, pretty typical east-west main breaks, like you would see down there as well. So we acquired the project three years ago from, uh, from Balmoral, uh, Balmoral Resources. And since then, we, we very rapidly uh, pushed ahead the development side of things and also exploration. 
so up to now, we drilled about 100,000 meters uh, in, the, in the three years uh, combined. And, uh, you know, I've talked about uh, Quebec being a, a great jurisdiction. You can already see here how, how much better it's, it's, it's uh, opened up than the Ontario side. You know, there's excellent roads going right to the project. We're about two hours away from, from a few major towns, uh, quite a few uh, milling facilities as well in the area. Uh, there's a power line uh, about 18 kilometers away from the project. So uh, it's a very good infrastructure and, and a workforce and, and uh, great place to, uh, to be in. This is zooming in on the, on the geology a little bit, just sort of emphasizing this east-west uh, main first order break. So Fenelon is, is, is located in a very, very nice orogenic gold setting. You're sort of in a, in a flexure uh, of, of the main break and in the pressure shadow of this, uh, this pluton there, the Jeremy pluton. Um, zooming in a bit more even, uh, so onto the property. Uh, you can see on the left hand side is this Jeremy pluton, which uh, this year's drilling has proven or shown to, to be a, a very dominant uh, a feature in the geology and, and, and put the whole deposit in a, in a different perspective than it was known before. Uh, previously, uh, everybody was focusing on this blue shape there, the, the main gabbro, uh, that was known to be the only host rock. And um, so this is a mag tilt derivative map in the background, and you can see uh, the two dominant structural orientations that are controlling the mineralization uh, at our gold system. And, and I'll point out this mag low here that you can see coming off. So that's a secondary splay uh, uh, structure coming off of the main Sunday Lake deformation zone, which would be a bit south of the page. And, um, you know, that's what we've realized this year is, 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 uh, is, is our Tabasco zone, and it's the contact of the Jeremy Pluton, and it's, it's, a, it's a very important co uh, control on the mineralization. Uh, we control about four kilometers of strike length of, of this, uh, this contact of the Jeremy Pluton. And even though most of the drilling is spent uh, expanding the actual footprint of the deposit, uh, as a proof of concept, we sort of stepped out 800 meters uh, on, a, on, a, on another structural geophysical target and got very similar uh, mineralization like we were seeing in, in Area 51. So we're quite, uh, uh, you know, quite encouraged that this, this contact can be, can be uh, uh, um, uh, hosting other, other zones like that. So just, uh, just a cross section here. So again, historically everybody focused on this main gabbro. This is where we took the bulk sample as well. Here on the right hand side is a zoomed in cross section. So these are typical high grade shear zones. Uh, the gabbro in between is, this, is, is, is barren, but it's very amenable for long hole stoping. Uh, and this is what we've done in the, in the bulk sample. And then you can see all the drilling used to be from the south to north, uh, testing this main gabbro. And we, uh, in 2018, just before Christmas, we, we drilled a hole from, from coming from the north to south. You can see this one single hole uh, coming from the north to south. So that was our hole 51. And, and uh, we ended up extending that hole past the Tabasco zone uh, to test that mag low that I was showing you in the previous map. And that's when we made this discovery of the, of the Area 51. Uh, basically, there was 200 meters of, of, of continuous uh, gold vein network mineralization hosted by this pluton. And, and this, this pluton was also not known in the past to occur there. So, so this whole geology and that mineralization is, uh, was, was, was newly discovered and uh, was, was quite, a, you know, quite a bit of a surprise for us, of course. Um, so this is where we are right now, the uh, sort of a plan view of the project. So again, this is the main gabbro here where we took the bulk sample, uh, small area where all the drilling uh, used to focus. And then this is, this is all that we've added uh, with this year's drilling. So a few things to uh, highlight. So that there's the Tabasco zone, which is our main shear zone. I'll, I'll t talk about it uh, in more detail. And like you see, most of the geology is going northwest, southeast, which is one of the orientations that I pointed out there on the mag map. And then, but now we're seeing that a lot of the, the other mineralization in this area 51 is actually controlled by these, uh, these almost east-west structures. 
And the confluence of the two is, 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 is uh, always giving us good mineralization and, and we think that's controlling a lot of the high grade shoots. And of course, you know, in the future we will be looking at other targets where, for example, this, this Orion corridor uh, meets the Tabasco zone should be a good area as well. Um, so this shows the, the drilling pattern as well. You can see the sections down here. So we, we're drilling on north-south sections, pretty aggressive 75 meter uh, spacing, uh, which in these gold systems you can appreciate it's, it's uh, pretty large step outs, but we wanted to understand the, the footprint uh, and, and you know we kept stepping out and, and, and basically extending the demineralization with, with each drill hole and uh, so we keep pushing it further to the west. Uh, you can see all these, all these zones are open to the west and then of course we will continue going up, up and down the, the contact of the, the pluton as well. Um, I'll show a few of these cross sections. So there's cross sections 200, 275, kind of through, through the middle here. Um, but first, I'll, I'll, let's look at the mineralization styles a little bit. So we have these ductile shear zones. Um, like I mentioned, the Tabasco, the Cayenne, and then also in the main Gabriel, the, the zones that we, that we historically had. So these are, uh, you know, very strong ductile deformation, uh, silicification site alteration, uh, quite a bit of sulfides in some places. Uh, calcopyrite uh, has been a really good indicator for us. Uh, and there's always uh, a lot of visible gold. Um, that's why we also got good recoveries in the, in the bulk sample. We got about 98% uh, recoveries on the gold. So that's one style of mineralization. And this is a, this is a, a 3D photogrammetry image from, from underground. So this is how one of our zones, the Naga Viper, uh, looked like uh, underground. So you can see very sharp boundaries of the shear zone, uh, about three, four meters wide. And basically this gabbro is totally barren here on the left-hand side. And then, and then boom, suddenly you're, you're into the shear zone and, and you're in, in double-digit uh, grades. There's a lot of internal folding going on, uh, quite sulfide-rich here as well. So that's sort of the material that we that we mined in the bulk sample, and that's sort of our best analog right now of, of how the Tabasco and the Cayenne might, might look like uh, uh, on the ground. So the other mineralization style is this vein network that I mentioned and uh, hosted by the Pluton, uh, which, we're, which we're calling the Area 51. So this is, it's, it's a bit different. Uh, Mineralogy-wise, it's, it's similar, like there's again quite a bit of sulfides, always a lot of visible gold, even in, the, in, the, in these narrow veinlets. And, and it's, these corridors are basically uh, where, where these veins are more concentrated and there's alteration in between. Some areas there's some shearing along the veins as well. So some cross sections here. Uh, again, looking west, so you can see here is the, the Pluton on the left hand side. We got the main Gabbro dipping to the south. So it kind of forms a nice funnel shape. And so near surface, these sediments used to be pretty, pretty quiet. Uh, the Tabasco zone, it shows up sometimes as, as, as narrow, high-grade uh, shear zone, sort of in that ductile uh, environment, doesn't have room to, to, to blow out. But then as it's coming down, uh, there's sort of a reverse movement, and, uh, and uh, you know, that's where it blows out, gets close to this brittle environment, uh, the contact of the pluton. And that's where we're getting these spectacular intersections of, of 22 grams over 48, uh, 32 over 10. Um, and then what's nice about the, you know, it makes the drilling very efficient is that uh, we're drilling in and out of uh, these Area 51 veins as well. So we're kind of getting, while we're drilling off the Tabasco anyways, we're, we're getting the Area 51 sort of as a, as a bonus as well. And that's where we're getting some of these uh, really nice long intersections of bulk mineable uh, like one grams over 132, but then within that we still have some of this underground higher grade material, so 20 grams over four meters here, for example. So that will add to any any future production from from uh, from a mining scenario uh, in the Tabasco. So this is a neighboring section, 75 meters over. You know, very similar geology. Uh, just emphasizing that apart from these bigger step outs, 75 100 meter step outs, like I said. Uh, we also did a few undercut holes uh, quite deep, so 250 meters uh, below here. Uh, and again, got really good results, very good gold endowment. Uh, 
So now we're down at 800, 850 meters. Uh, so again, over four grams, over 35 meters. Uh, this, uh, the cayenne zone is, is showing up there as well. So it gives us good, co good confidence that now that this Tabasco zone is along the edge of the pluton, this will just uh, keep going. And usually in the Abitibi, things don't stop at 800 meters. So we're hopeful that, that uh, you know, this will, this will uh, go, go to much uh, greater depth. So this is a long section of the, of the Tabasco zone. Uh, and some of some of the uh, photos from uh, from the mineralization. So again, you can see in the in the top, uh, in this upper Tabasco, it's kind of patchy, uh, nuggety. In some areas, it's you know it will be narrow, high grade mineable, uh, underground mineable. But really, where where things are are getting to uh, uh, picking up and, and and really blowing out is around 400 meters. Below that, basically each intersection. Uh, shows, uh, you know, ore grade intersections, um, even with the 100 meter, 100 meter spacing, uh, whether it's five grams over 11, or 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 these 40 grams over over 19 meters. So it's very nice uh, uh, zone shaping up here, very continuous, uh, and uh, you know these are those two undercut holes that I mentioned, again showing it down to 800 meters. So so far we have about 500 meter down dip. 500 meter uh, along a strike. It's about 10 meters true width from what we can sort, sort of assess based on this large spacing so far. And you know, we're continuing to push it uh, along strike. So these are a couple more cross sections further to the west showing where this area 51 mineralization is actually coming close to surface. So now we're looking also at, at, at a potential of, of uh, of having an open pit component to a future mine as well. Uh, so these shapes are basically 0.5 gram grade shells. So each one of these intersection uh, drill holes goes through say two, 200, 250 meters of 0 0.6, 0 0.8 gram material. And then within that you always have these higher grade intervals of like 1.2 over 70, 1.2 over 40. So you know, it, the open pit isn't our focus here. Uh, we're, we're, we're mainly focusing on the underground high grade story, but this is kind of coming with it right now and, and hopefully it will, it will turn into something in, in the future because obviously that would, that would have very significant uh, ounces to it. So that's sort of the strategy on, on the project. So like I mentioned last year, we drilled 75,000 meters, uh, mostly these bigger step outs. We extended the mineralization down from basically 200 meters to, to now at 800, 850 meters. Uh, and then this year we're following up on that uh, with the, with the 120,000 meters uh, of drilling. We're gonna continue with the same sort of approach uh, of these bigger step outs, but then also do some infill drilling. So we wanna set ourselves up for, for uh, uh, a resource estimate uh, in, in about a year from now. So this is just kind of showing again, uh, uh, the, so the area, 90% of this year's drilling will be, again, sort of the, uh, in, the, in the footprint of the deposit, keep pushing the, the limits of it and, and further down. And then we're gonna come back uh, and, and, and start doing more of the discipline in, infill drilling. So here showing on the cross section again, very efficient drill, drilling. Basically, we got five dr rigs on, on this surface program. And so we're drilling off the Tabasco, Cayenne uh, at depth, and then, and then we're also getting the Area 51 uh, along with it. So when we're looking at a Tabasco long section again, uh, you know, right now what we're doing with these rigs is, is we, we, we still do these uh, larger step outs along strike, uh, trying to increase this, uh, this, this purple envelope here, increase the strike length. We'll, we will be doing two or three holes uh, at, at, at greater depth, below a kilometer, just to prove up that you know, this system does, does uh, continue to extend and, uh, and, and hopefully end up with indicated resources down to about 750 meters uh, with this year's program. So just to finish up, uh, of course, you know, the catalyst, obviously, uh, a lot of drill results to, to come out. We're drilling about 10,000 meters a, a month with the six rigs. Uh, and, um, you know, we have a lot of, in the background, we have a lot of permitting uh, and, and studies on the way as well. We're doing a lot of metallurgy, environmental studies that will set us up for, for the economic studies uh, next year or after. 
Um, some of you probably remember Walbridge well, still from, from the nickel copper PGE days. Uh, we have a large uh, number of assets in Sudbury. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, we have a separate team focusing on that, actually trying to unlock the value there right now. Obviously, the market doesn't give us much, much value for those at the moment because all the attention is on Fenelon. Uh, but we believe there's, there's really good assets there as well. So we're, 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 we're working on, on uh, separating the two stories probably later this year. So, yeah, thanks a lot for the attention. And uh, at the PDAC, I'll, I'll, I'll be having another talk that will be probably a little bit more technical, more on the geology. But, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions if you have.